Hello, I'm Michael Baker from East Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina, and today I'm going to build a computer. So, we have all the parts that we need right here. I am uh, building this based off of a design that was done on uh, tomshardware.com. They had their September 2010 System Builder Marathon, and I will be building the $400 PC that they created on there. Uh, now, the only difference between my build and the components that they used is that uh, I have decided to go with 4 gigs of RAM as opposed to the 2 that they used. So let's take a look at the components. So we have our case right here. This is the Rosewill Blackbone case. Lots of nice room in there. Some USB ports and then other standard ports up on top. I've just taken all this stuff out of the box. <clears throat> there we have the power supply. It's a 460 watt Cooler Master Elite power supply. Uh, over here we have our processor, which is going to be an AMD Athlon 2 X3 440 processor. This is a triple core processor that runs at 3 gigahertz. Uh, and then here we have our motherboard right below it. That's the AS Rock. Pro, uh, motherboard, and then we have our RAM, which 4 gigs of DDR3 1600 RAM. Uh, <clears throat> video card over here, power color, uh, this is an ATI Radeon 5670, with 1 gig of D GDDR5 memory. And then here we have our hard drive, just a Western Digital 250 gig hard drive. Uh, in there we've got the DVD burner, <clears throat> and then uh, of course our copy of Windows 7 I'm going to install on this. Uh, and just a couple other things I ordered just in case I need them. We have two uh, SATA cables, and then a little tube right here of Arctic Silver 5 for connecting our processor, our CPU, to the heat sink so that we get a good dis uh, dispersal of heat. So let's get started putting this thing together. Alright, so let's begin by uh, taking the side off of the case. And this is really easy to do. So there's our case. And so for this type of case, the side panel here is attached with two screws, one right here, and then one down below that I've already taken out. It's right here. And so uh, you can take these off with a Phillips head screwdriver or a flathead, or you can just loosen them by hand. They have little ridges on the side there, so it's pretty easy to do by hand. And then this just slides back and right out like so. Alright, so let's just set that over to the side. And then in here is where all of our components are going to go. And so I'm going to take some of this plastic wrapping off here and uh, twist ties and things just to get everything in order and then the first thing we're going to install in here is the power supply which is going to go right up there. So now that I have the case open uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and taken the twist ties off of these power connector cables. These connect uh, well it's power and it's also the connections for all of these front audio uh, and USB ports and this one also includes a bag that has all of the necessary components. There are screws to hold things in place right there. These are going to hold our motherboard in place, which we're going to install first. And then we have a lot of power cables and things like that in here too, and uh, little straps to hold everything in place. So let's go ahead and take the motherboard here out of the box and work on getting that in there. All right, so there's our motherboard. The box is open. Uh, that largest component that you see there is the motherboard in the static protection bag. Uh, then other things that came with this one. Uh, we have this little panel that's going to go on the rear of the computer. This is just going to provide places for everything to stick out. The mouse port, USB ports, and all the audio ports. And this particular motherboard came with two serial ATA cables. So. I may not need to use these other ones that I bought, we'll see. And it looks like it also came with a standard ATA cable. 
We'll need to replace the panel on the back of the case. Uh, it came with this standard panel, but our motherboard came with this one, which uses uh, has some different holes in it, different places for things to stick out to connect to. And so this one that came with the case will actually just pop right out here. If you push in on this, it just comes right out. Right? And so I'm going to replace this one with the new one. And now you can see that new plate is in there. It just popped right in. I reached around here and just pushed in. You have to use a little bit of force to get it to snap into place, but it doesn't require any tools. It just snaps right on there. All right, and so next what we're going to do is actually before we install the motherboard, we are going to install the power supply over here. So I'm going to open that up, and we'll go ahead and stick that in. And the back of that will come out right here. That's what this big hole in the back of the case is for. And so let's do that. Here's our power supply out of the box. This, of course, is the part that's going to be sticking out of the back of the computer there once we put it in. And then on the other side we have a whole bunch of power connectors. I'm going to leave those bundled for the time being so that they're out of the way when I install the motherboard. And on the bottom here, we have a fan. This is, of course, to cool the power source, and it just blows out right there. All right, our power supply is now installed, as you can see. I had a little bit of trouble getting the screws in there and the holes. It wasn't too bad. Uh, I had to put it in by hand. I found it's easier to stop, start with the top ones and then do the bottom ones. Uh, incidentally, that came with its own screws. I didn't use the screws that came with the case. And we'll keep the power cord separate. We're not going to hook that in until everything is connected and we're ready to turn this thing on for the first time. And now we're going to take the important step of installing the motherboard. And let's just take a close-up look at it. This AS Rock motherboard here. This is where our processor is going to go. This is where the memory, the RAM, goes. Our video card is going to connect down here, and then this is where any peripherals would connect. Over here we have some of the SATA connectors, that's where our hard drive and our DVD burner are going to connect. And then there are other places for connections down here. This is for a floppy drive, which we don't actually have. Um, let's see, HD audio connector right here, some digital audio. Uh, so we'll get everything hooked up here in just a minute. Now, before we drop that motherboard into the case, we actually have to install these little boogers, and these are called standoffs. And uh, there's a screw hole in one end of these, and so they serve to lift the motherboard off from that metal backing that you see there. And then you can attach the motherboard to the case through these. The screws go into those little holes. So we'll go ahead and put these in in the appropriate spots. You see all these little holes here, and that's what those are for. All right, and there we have our motherboard in there securely. Just used a regular Phillips head screwdriver to attach that with the correct version of the screws, which you can find outlined here in the manual. And so, let's see what we're going to do next. We are going to go ahead and connect the processor, and then we'll do the RAM and the video card. Right. And then we have other devices that we have to do yet. We have to put in the hard drive over in here, and we have to put in the disk drive. So I think I might actually do those drives first. Okay, so this this might be a little tricky. I had to pop the front cover off of this uh, in order to remove this slot where the drive will go, and it just pulls right off. You can see there are these little metal clips that hold it in there usually. Oops. And so I just gave it a good tug, and those clips came loose, and then we can remove this. There's a little clip right there. It's going to come right out. Oh, there's another one over here. Alright, so we'll remove this. 
and then put our drive in. As you can see, the drive is just going to slide right on in there. Oops, sorry. Slide, the drive is just going to slide right on in there like so. Alright, and then I took this fastener off earlier. This is a toolless design, so I'm just going to put that right in there and it'll snap that drive into place. I've attached that now. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the front cover right back on here over that. That should just snap right back into place. Which, i got to put the camera down to do that. And now I have opened the box for the processor, our AMD Athlon 2X3440 triple core processor. And you'll see two main things in the box. Uh, we have our the CPU itself, this is your processor, the heart and soul of the computer, and then the other thing in there is this guy. And this is of course the heat sink which transfers all the heat generated by the processor out through this and then the fan blows air on it there and cools it back off. And we're just going to use, this is called a, hot, a stock heat sink because it came bundled with the processor. Some people that want to do fancier stuff like overclocking will use an aftermarket heat sink or something like a liquid cooling system. But we are just going to use the stock one because we're not going to do anything fancy. And um, so this comes with a little bit of sticky stuff on the bottom there that makes contact with the processor, but I've done a little reading and I know that a lot of people who really know what they're doing more than I do recommend this here. This is a conductive silver compound, Arctic Silver 5, high density polysynthetic silver thermal compound. And so we're going to use this. What we'll do is we'll install our CPU on that where that little white square is there. Then we're going to put a little dab of this Arctic Silver 5 on there. And the purpose of that is to conduct the heat from the processor onto that spot on the heat sink. Right? So once our Arctic Thermal 5 is down there, we're going to put the heat sink on. And it has some little latches here. And it just latches down onto this orange frame. So we'll go ahead and do that. So there's our processor, shiny and new, ready for installation. There are the many pins on the bottom of that that connect it to the motherboard. And you'll see there's a little lever right here that lifts up, moves this whole socket over. And we're going to put this down in there. And it will only go on one way because of these gaps that you see. And then once it's down in there, we just push that lever back down and it locks it into place. And then we'll apply our Arctic Silver. Okay, so that went on there really easily. It just sat down in and locked on. Now I'm going to take our Arctic Silver and just put a dab right in the middle here, about a pea-sized dab, and that'll spread out when we, uh, when we lock down the heat sink. There's that thermal compound, and like we said, that's going to increase the conductivity between our processor and that heat sink. All right, just a little dab will do you there. There we go. Oop. All right, so now our heat sink is on there. And the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and install the RAM. That's one of the easiest things to do. That just pops right in these slots here. And then we'll put the video card in right over there. And then once those components are in, it'll be time to hook everything into the power source and make it run and install our operating system.